We'll get into that more on that in a second. The sales tax then gets a little bit more complex because then they had to say, well, look, that's not fair to states that choose to have a sales tax. You're imposing a tax system on the states who are so supposed to be sovereign by giving preferential treatment to the people that have an income tax system and not a sales tax system. So then they had, instead of getting rid of deducting the state taxes altogether, they included the sales tax, which is a lot more complex because a sales tax means that you're basically calculating the tax on everything that you that you buy, right? So in order to not have to track everything that you buy to calculate the sales tax, there's these general tax worksheets for like the average tax. And if I go in here, you got the state and local taxes and there's some uh, worksheets helping us to calculate the tax. So here's the state and local tax uh, worksheet that's being used to calculate it. I won't go into it in depth, but that's the that's the general idea. So then the question is, well, do I want to use the easy worksheet to calculate the sales tax or do I want to do my actual sales tax that I paid? And if you're in a situation where you had uh, paid for large items, such as a car or a boat or something like that, it's quite likely your sales tax is higher than the average on the table and it might be beneficial to do the actual sales tax in that case and then we looked at all the rules and prior presentations on the tax rate you have to use the general rate and whatnot and so on so i won't go on that into a lot more detail but but that's the general that's the general idea now you also could have issues if you lived in one state for part of the year and another state in the other part of the year and there's a different sales tax for both those different states and you're trying to use the sales tax table and you lived part of the year in each state then you'd have to use a ratio analysis to kind of allocate using the proper two tables and so on and so on but this is being calculated by the table is the bottom line if i if i then jump to the sales tax and let's imagine that it was a sales tax system here even though i have a california i'm in california personally uh, so i usually would do the income tax even though we have a sales tax but usually we would do an income tax but because it would be higher for any case state and local ta sales taxes paid so if i go here and i put an actual amount of state and local sales taxes paid which we would have to track if we're doing this actual amount and let's say it was it was you know whatever three thousand and then i pull it back on over so now it's being calculated at the three thousand for the amount that i populated instead of using you know like like being reliant just on the tables to do the calculation okay so and then and then that would add up of course and so on and so forth so so then let's say let's say that i was had a state income tax system like california has an income tax which is often higher than the sales tax so that would often be on your w-2 so when you enter the w-2 for example for many people you're going to have the withholdings so you might have the state tax withholdings that are on the federal tax return so when i enter the state tax withholdings let's say they were 2500 let's say then if i go back on over now that's being now that's going to be populated in my taxes here so i've got the state and local taxes at the 2500 so generally when you're when you're doing a tax return that has state tax preparation within it then usually when you when you enter the w-2 withholdings you're basically thinking of the withholdings on the state taxes in a similar fashion as being applied to the state return not the federal return so the thing that's usually in your mind is just like when you paid the federal income tax which is the same like on the w-2 here 15,000 you would think well yeah on the 1040 that 15,000 is going to be on page two of the form 1040 as the amount that we paid so I'm going to calculate the tax minus the amount that we paid same thing on the California return uh, or any return that that's an income tax system I'm, I'm putting the withholdings in there so I can calculate the tax minus the amount that we paid in the withholdings but then we have the added complexity of the amount that you paid with the withholdings for state taxes could be deductible on the federal tax side of things if you're doing an itemized deduction so you don't get the benefit of that when you're doing the standard deduction which is kind of annoying because again it kind of benefits higher income individuals which is a little funny but it gets capped at the ten thousand. so there it is at the the four thousand that's being 
uh, pulled in. So that's the amount that we paid. Now let's play with that a little bit. If I pull that full fat 4,000 up to very high income levels that have a high tax, and I pulled it up to like uh, 12,000, then it's going to be, it's going to be capped. Well, the whole thing is going to be capped. I got, I got worried that the whole thing is going to be capped at the 10,000 now. And that's that controversial law that came in to play a few years ago where people were saying, hey, look, you guys are really abusing this state tax thing because it helps out high income individuals. Low income individuals don't get to deduct any of the taxes because they're not itemizing. Now you're deducting the state taxes and you get this massive deduction for high in income individuals. Plus it's subsidizing states that have high tax rates and so on and so forth. So they capped it at 10,000. So it's a, that was a very kind of controversial thing. So now you have a situation where the, the state taxes are quite beneficial and often push people or help push people over to the point where they're taking this the itemized deduction versus the standard deduction, but you've got this this cap. So, so then and that's not that high if you lived in a high cost of living state that you could be paying over 10,000 when you include property taxes on uh, the state and local tax. So that is a significant cap, which was controversial and interesting that they put that in. Let's put that back to 4,000. And also just realize that if you got a refund from from last year that is that it is included in the current in in, in the current year, then uh, that means that you you could have got a deduction. This is this is where the deduction is at that we talked about on the income side of things. So in other words, in a prior presentation, we thought, do I have to include a state tax refund in the income line over here? Because they sometimes they give you a 1099 for it. That would be on the schedule one. And we're gonna, we said they got the taxable refund. Well, and we said the only, the only reason that you would have to include the refund in income is if you got a benefit from it last year. So meaning, if they had a schedule a like this in 2021 and they were able to deduct the 4,000 in this case of uh, taxes they got a benefit from that deduction 